Greetings, it is time for our monthly inflation update. And in this month's inflation update, we look at my familiar matrix where I say that all three of these metrics have to be above 3% before I say inflation is a structural problem and money printing is too high. That is the 10 year compound annual growth rate of the US CPI, the 10 year compound annual growth rate of the Goldman Sachs Commodity Index, and the 10 year US Treasury yield. All three have to be above 3% before I say inflation is high. And if all three were exactly at 3%, that is when inflation is optimal. You need to graduate past this belief that inflation is automatically bad and deflation is good. But if you're a viewer of this channel, you're probably way too smart to think that. Unfortunately, in the broader world, far too many people simply think that. So we go to the 10-year U.S. Treasury yield first. 10-year U.S. Treasury yield. 3.95%, so that is in fact above 3%. It had peaked briefly at almost 5% a month or two ago, but it's at 3.95% right now. Now we go to the Goldman Sachs Commodity Index. Goldman Sachs Commodity Index, minus 1.25% at the 10-year compound annual growth rate. And this is the most important measurement of the three, as I often say, because commodities are priced worldwide and this is a composite of freely traded commodities. So that narrative of how inflation statistics are rigged, that completely goes out the window and is invalidated when one looks at the Goldman Sachs Commodity Index. So this comprises of oil, gold, natural gas, silver, etc., as an index freely traded and worldwide. And this is in deflation and has been in deflation. And remember, this is the purest measurement of inflation because commodities are where higher prices are unambiguously bad whereas lower prices are unambiguously good, and people think that applies to the entire economy and they get really confused about that. With service price inflation, it's far more ambiguous because someone paying more for services simultaneously means that the service provider's salary rose, and people ultimately are saying, well, what I get paid should rise because I'm a service provider, but services I buy should not rise. And it doesn't quite work that way, and so service price inflation is more ambiguous about whether it's a good thing or bad thing. But commodity price inflation has a very, very low labor component as a percentage of total cost, and therefore commodity price inflation is the purest measurement of pernicious inflation, and that is why this is the most important measurement of the three. Now we go to the US CPI. This is the bls.gov website, and as we scroll down, we can see here that this is the actual CPI number, and the 10-year compound annual growth rate is done by measuring this number divided by this number and taking the one tenth root of that because this is a 10 year growth rate and i will shortly have a table showing you that this is the one month inflation rate you can see that that one flutter that happened over a year ago is now further and further in the past and people are still whining about that to smooth out the volatility you have this two month inflation rate three month inflation rate six month inflation rate and one year inflation rate. And now I can summarize all of this for you in a table so you can see this in addition to these graphs. This is the December 2023 trailing reading for the one month, two month, three month and six month inflation rates. And to annualize this number, Obviously, the one month has to be to the 12th power because there's 12 one month periods in a year. The two month has to be the sixth power because there are six two month periods in a year. The three month has to be to the fourth power because there are four three month periods in a year. Six months has to be squared because that is two periods of six months within a year. One year was 3.3%. Two years, of course, the reverse occurs. You take the square root of two years to get the one year moving average, the cube root of three years to get the moving average annualized, fifth root for five years, and this is the one that we want. 10 years is 10th root, and that is 2.8%. And the one year is 3.3%. When the one year happened to be high for a brief period of time, all kinds of strange people started to show up saying that only the one year window matters. But now that the one year inflation amount is not particularly high, these people are nowhere to be found. They're unusually bad at math and they got found out and exposed. And you can see here that all these near windows of time are not inflationary at all. The shortest window has the most volatility, of course, and and the longest has the lowest volatility. That is why we take the 10 year moving average so as to smooth out peaks and troughs. And then they added this extra row of inflation CPI measured over the entirety of the 21st century from January 1st, 2001. This takes a lot to move this in either direction, but it's trending at 2.5% and the last 10 years is trending at 2.8%. So no, inflation is not high 
as measured by the CPI. And the CPI is not rigged either, as we saw from the Goldman Sachs Commodity Index. Now we go back to the scorecard. So we saw the results for all three of these metrics. And to summarize those results for today, January 14th, 2024, the U.S. CPI is at 2.8%. It's getting close to 3%, but it's still below 3%. The GSCI, the most important of the three for the reasons I explained, is still in deflation, minus 1.25%. Oil is still in the 70s of dollars per barrel. Oil consumption as a percentage of the entire world economy is only half of what it was in 2014. That is amazing, but all commodities are in structural deflation if you understand the economics of technology, as I explain in many places on this channel. And only this one, the 10-year U.S. Treasury yield, is above 3%, 3.95%. This would still have been considered low at any point in the final 30 years of the 20th century, but it's higher than 3% now in a deflationary age. So only one of these three measurements is above 3%. So no, structural inflation is not high. I don't care what anyone says because those who disagree don't have real data. They have only anecdotes. And commodities are in fact in deflation as one would expect. But since a lot of people like to debate via anecdote, let's go to a sector by sector segmentation of inflation in the December 2023 reading. CNBC produces this chart in every month's inflation reading. And you can see how many important things are actually going down in price even though that composite one-year inflation amount was the number that we saw, not particularly high in any event, but eggs have gone down 23.8%. People were hysterical about eggs. I even have videos about that. People utterly lost their mind about the price of eggs being a little bit high. Lettuce has gone down a lot. Tomatoes, all these things have gone down in price. Energy, the whole sector, over here we do the entire sector and it's in deflation, minus 2%. All this whining about energy costs. Fuel oil, gas service in substantial deflation, even gasoline is down. Health insurance, another extremely important cost in people's day-to-day -day lives, down 27.1%. That is huge. That is a major relief to the long-suffering consumer. It is down by a huge amount. It's down even more than eggs. So that is truly profound. And all these other things are also in deflation as well. So people who like to debate via anecdote really can be crushed by supplying these anecdotes as well because they are just desperate to look for some reason to play the victim and to not blame themselves for making poor choices in life. A lot of people who claim inflation is high always use extremely unhealthy junk food as their best example. They use Doritos and Big Macs and Pringles potato chips and Ho-Ho's and Cadbury cream eggs as their examples of what rose a lot in price. And these people while screaming about how worried they are about inflation, really ought to be worried about something that is a very similar sounding word, but a very different concept, inflammation. These inflation mongers don't seem to use healthy food as an example of what is experiencing inflation. Because healthy food does not have food scientists and marketing director salaries baked into the price of their food. See, potato chips and Doritos, etc., employ a lot of food scientists and marketing directors and ad agencies for those ads you see on TVs and so forth. And that is why all those costs have to be defrayed. Whereas if you just buy broccoli or carrots or pasture-raised eggs or whatever, something that does not have all these expensive, highly skilled people supported by the sale of that product, you actually get something that's healthier and not rising in price. Therefore, when someone whines a lot about inflation, their doctor should check them for inflammation. It's funny how those coincidences arise. That tells us that there is something operating at a higher level connecting all of these memes together. But this was our monthly inflation update. And if you like this type of content, I encourage you to subscribe to this channel. Thank you very much for watching.